next speaker will be Lucy Akello, Member of Parliament in Uganda and Member of the Forum for Democratic Change Political Party. She is the Women's Representative for Amuru District in the Ugandan Parliament. She's been Executive Director at the Justice and Peace Commission where she worked for human rights, land rights, women's rights, and children's rights. She graduated in social science at the Makerere University in Kampala and has a Master of Arts in Development Studies from Uganda Martyrs University. Lucy? Thank you uh, so much, uh, Excellencies and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, speaking, almost the last speaker is uh, a big burden, but I'll try my level best to capture your attention. And I will start by saying God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, and that's his nature. Wow. Yes, I hope I've captured now your attention. Um, I want to first of all start by really, really from the depth of my heart to thank Lola and your team for bringing us together here. It's my first time to be at the UN. I am a leader. Not all of us have the opportunity to come here. And when you have the opportunity, make the best of it. And that is what I have done and what I intend to do. From the, begin from the morning, I've been listening and also making my personal prayer that God will make an intervention that this meeting will not go to, to frail. That has been my prayer since morning. And Lola, may God bless you as you continue to stare at us. And I want to say each and every one of you who has been here since morning, your intervention is not in vain. And I want to say that all of you are heroes. According to me, you're all heroes. Because the issues that we talk about are not issues that people want to associate with. Many people fear to talk about these issues. And I must say, it is very risky to talk about the things that you do. Some of us who have been doing this, we know the risk. We know the risk associated with uh, talking about and promoting life. I was telling people that when I was invited to do a talk in 2017 uh, in, in, in Rome, I was labeled a rebel, I was labeled almost a terrible person, a dangerous person. Look at Muriel, how can I be a dangerous person? And my crime, talking about children, promoting family. That was my crime. So it is not easy, but I, I, I look at all of you and I get energized. Coming in such a conference, I feel energy and when I go back, I will fight. My colleagues, the Africans who are here, we... I look at this as forming an army for Africa because I know all the eyes are now in Africa to terrorize us and terrorize our families. But I must say, and I must warn the people who are coming, we are forming an army in Africa and you will not penetrate. Now, they say never give a microphone to a, a politician because they will take all the time. I never write my speech. I like to speak from my heart. But for this one, I had to, to scribble something so that I don't go beyond the many minutes. Because when I begin to speak about these issues, I can even talk for the whole day. You know, Article 31.4 of our Constitution of Uganda says that it is the right and the duty of parents to care for and bring up their children. Even we have, by the way, in Uganda, we have the Uganda National Parenting Guidelines. It was developed by the Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development in May 2018. Guess what? It says mother and father. And the definition is these are biological parents of a child. And it says man and woman. It doesn't say man and man. And then the definition of a parent. This is the biological mother and father responsible for the growth and development of a child. This is in our policy. Parenting, what does it say? It says the process of nurturing, socializing, providing for the child's holistic growth and development. It is a shared responsibility between both parents, that is a man and a woman. So, basically, in Uganda, 
just like in elsewhere in Africa, we have challenges with, with all families. But I'll come to that later. And according to the Act, the Children's Act, Cap 59, as amended, schedule, uh, the second schedule, it stipulates that it shall be the duty of a parent, guardian, or any person to provide education and guidance, immunization, adequate diet, etc., so on and so on. It also obligates the state to put in place mechanisms, programs for child care and protection. I must say that in Uganda, all this is done. Only that we are let down by some of the technocrats. In Uganda also, the family is the fundamental, and also in Africa, and basic unity of society. The family serves its members as a reproductive unit, social culture, and spiritual moral base. I read somewhere, I will not mention the name of the country, they say that the country had not had birth, new birth, for some months. And I made a joke on that forum and I said, okay, if they don't want to produce more children, we shall produce more children and occupy their country. Yeah, because they don't want to. This is the major role of the family. In the family, in the family we, have, we have people who play a big role, like the parents, the grandparents, and I liked the example of Hungary. How the grandmother, the grandparent is involved in nurturing of the children. Step parents, is it what? Foster and adoptive parents. All these ones play a very key role in upbringing of the child. The contribution of the family and grandparents in particular to the day-to-day -day care of children and in providing practical, emotional, and often financial support to, to their own children is, huge, is hugely significant. Children of all ages learn from everything they see, hear, and do. They learn from their parents their teachers, health workers, peers, communities, the media, and internet. The actions of such people and communities affect how children think, feel, and behave. They may inspire children to adopt persuasive behaviors and practices, including generally unacceptable values and norms. Parents therefore need to develop their abilities and skills to raise children in responsible citizens. Article, in, in, we also have the Education Act in Uganda, and it states that parents are responsible, among the many, to review the curriculum, education curriculum. Guess what? Last year, when I was going through assignment with my daughter, in the text, the assignment, the question they asked, what is the role of Reproductive Health Uganda? Reproductive Health Uganda is an, is an NGO, is a civil society organization, a product of international planned parenthood. And they are asking my child, what is the role of reproductive health? I said, where did you get this from? It is in our textbook. Going to the textbook, it is there. They are saying they are making children learn about the roles of reproductive health, Uganda. And one of the roles which is in the textbook says that they may, where possible, legalize abortion. You should have seen the shock on my face. When I went to Parliament and I raised this issue on the floor, and I said, who is responsible for the curriculum? They said I was lying. First bring the textbook. I had to run to the nearest shop, buy the textbook, opened it, read it for the whole parliament, and showed them, and they said, oh my God, this is really happening. The parents are supposed to be part of this, but they were not part of this. And we know who took over the civil society because they have money to, to throw around. And then I also wanted to talk about the challenges. The biggest challenge in Africa, 
and Uganda is that most of these families, parents are poor. People come with money and they want to take advantage. They come and say, I want to take your child for education. I want to go and sponsor your child for education. And without any suspicion, they will hand over the children. Next you'll hear the children are involved in prostitution. Next you'll hear they are either being introduced into homosexuality activities without the parents really knowing, and it becomes a disaster. Now, I, I want to appeal to all of us who are, who are here, let us go back as we celebrate the, 50, the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights today. Let us go back and say no to these things which are making our children uh, not do the right thing, but also as parents taking back our, our roles and responsibilities and then the, the governments ensuring that the parents are supported to do their roles. And indeed, I liked the saying that moms will change the world. I am a mother of four. I am a mother of four, and it gives me so much pride that I am a mother. I was actually telling my neighbor, I said, if only God could allow me to produce three more children, I will be very happy. Because my parliament, my parliament has given me a very conducive environment. We have a crash in parliament of Uganda. If I gave birth, I am, I am at liberty to go with my child to, host, I mean, to parliament, breastfeed my child, and my child will be taken care of. I must say, you are the salt of the world. Never give up. The struggle continues. Let's all stick together, and I'm sure this world will be a better place. Thank you so much, and God bless you.